There's a story before that story, the story about, you know, she got the call. I was casting, um, when I got the call from Quincy to cast uh, The Color Purple, the, the meat, I was in the middle of casting uh, The Life and Times of Jojo Dancer for Richard Pryor. Quincy Jones had been called to Chicago to be deposed for a lawsuit that a young woman claimed she had a baby named Billie Jean and by Michael Jackson. And Quincy was being questioned as to whether or not Billie Jean was a fictional character or was, it wasn't inspired by this, this woman. It was all just a nuisance, you know, suit with no basis. But while there, he turned on the television, he saw a young woman, young woman named Oprah Winfrey on the Oprah show, a local TV show. And he called me in New York. He said, I'm looking at a show for, um, called Oprah, a local TV show here in Chicago. A woman that could be right for, you know, for, um, for Sophia. I said, well, I'll be coming to Chicago when I leave New York, so I'm meeting kids there for JoJo Dancer. I said, I'll call, I'll call the network and uh, her, her studio and arrange to meet with her. So I called uh, Debbie Dozier, her producer at that time, and, and I said, do you have any videos? She said, yes, I do. So she sent me a tape of Oprah, not the talk show. What she sent me was a, uh, a VHS of Oprah's one-woman show. She had toured doing um, a one-woman show portraying black historical figures, Fannie Lou Hamer, Ida B. Wells, and it was very impressive, you know, and, and um, Sojourner Truth. So, and I prided myself on knowing most of, especially all the black actors in, you know, in the country, or the majority, but here was someone that I didn't know, who, because she had a day job, who would moonlight and go out and do these one-woman shows, and she was, it was very good. So I was very encouraged. So my introduction to her was not from the talk show, but from her as an actress. So I go to Chicago on a Sunday. I'm running a, I was running an office for another casting director to do my auditions with the, with the little boys, and, and I had scheduled um, like between three to four to meet with Oprah at an office. And um, then I was taking a flight that night. Now, I'm from Chicago. It was one of the coldest days of the year. It was so cold that my mother wouldn't even come downtown to see me. <laughs> okay, she says it's too cold to come outside. I'll have to see you next time. So uh, I'm there in the office, and there's a knock on the door, and I answer the door, and it's Oprah, and she says, "I'm here to see Reuben Cannon," and I say, "I'm, Re I'm Reuben Cannon," and she says, "Look, Mister, I have 101 temperature. I got out of my bed to come here. I don't have time for games. I want to meet Reuben Cannon." I said, well, what makes you think I'm not Reuben Cannon? And she caught herself. She realized she didn't think Reuben Cannon was black. So we had a laugh, and she came in, and I offered her some tea. I think we sat there, and we had tea. And we started first talking about, our first time we began talking about, she says, well, you know, I'm, I'm destined to play this role. I said, really? She says, no, we were calling it, we were calling it Moon Song. We were operating, we were, we were operating under a, a false title, as to, so you know, we wouldn't say the color purple. So the the working title was Moon Song, which was an alias for. So Oprah says, "This is about the color purple, isn't it?" I say, "What makes you think that?" She said, I, "I know it's about color purple." I say, "Yes, it is." She said, "I'm destined to play the role of Sophia." I say, "Why do you say that?" She says, "Well, Sophia, spelled backwards, is Harpo." I said, oh, "That's interesting." I said, "I'll." You know, and Harpo is, is the, you know, the husband to Sophia. I said, it's interesting. I'll tell uh, the other actresses that who were up for the role. And um, it's okay. It's, it's mine. It's, 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 I'm meant to play this part. Just, so then we went on and had a conversation about metaphysics and other things. And, and I said, I'm going to give you the material and I, to work on. Uh, I told her how much I pre how much I admired her audition her, her the one woman show tape. So I need to I need to videotape you auditioning in this role. I'm going to give you a local actor here in town to coach you and work with you. Just to you know. And a week later, I, I had a casting director videotape her, and the tape arrived. I showed it to Stephen. Stephen thought it was terrific. He said, "When we do when I do the, the screen test, we'll have her come in." So we were auditioning, because I was looking for Sugar Avery, you know, there was various roles, looking for Sugar Avery and Sophia that day. It was, uh, so there was a Saturday, all the actors, had, you know, I had uh, Margaret Avery auditioning for Sugar Avery. We had 
Phyllis Hyman auditioning for Sugar Avery. Uh, we had an actress from Paris, so it was a pretty long, and then we had um, Alfred Woodard, I believe, auditioning for Sophia and Oprah. And Oprah was fantastic. She was just on fire. She came in, you know. And with Stephen, and you know, he was he didn't give any indication, you know. So the audition was over, and and Oprah had gone. It was a while where she'd gone off to a fat farm to lose weight. And uh, and my version of the story is that I call this: if you lose one pound, you're gonna lose the role because your character has a knockout, has a perform. She has to knock a man out. This is not a role for a spelled actress. This is the role for a heavy set actress. Her version that Stephen called her there at the fat farm, and you know, but she also, but her own personal uh, struggle with the fact that while waiting, you know, the high anxiety, she had enormous anxiety because she had prayed and she believed the role was hers, and she hadn't heard anything. And even in, the, the, she says, I would call Reuben Cannon, and he said he would say, "Why are you calling me?" I probably wouldn't be. I don't know if I was that harsh, but I would. I, I in hindsight, perhaps, I say, why are you calling me? I'll call you when it's, you know. And we're friends, we're very close friends to this day and business associates, I mean, but, but very dear friends, and we've had a laugh about that many times. And she tells it in her, in her, in her tour, she's, when she's on tour, uh, about having faith and trust that what's yours will come. Um, so, we, you know, she gets, the, she gets the call, and she's absolutely, thrilled and over to me. She's flown out to LA and she gets, gets the role and Stephen tells her in the office she and uh, Willard Prue who plays her husband Harpo who also had never had a major role like that and that's what part of the movie I think is so wonderful that it such these wonderful actors that were introduced to I me. Mean, we knew Danny Glover from Lethal Weapons that we'd never seen Whoopi and so it's just so wonderful ensemble of black actors. Um, so the movie goes on, I, you know it was a wonderful cast, the movie goes on and receives 11 Academy Award nominations. I was Oprah's escort to the Oscars, you know. And her category is up first, Best Supporting Actress. So I was her escort and um, we sat in the front row and that began a very painful night. 11 nominations, zero wins. And I don't think afterwards, uh, we didn't go to the governor's ball, we went back to the whole team, Whoopi and everybody. we went back and had salad at the hotel there and, you know. But to show you the, how it's not always uh, the destiny and what's, what's the term, what will ultimately be received, you know, that you, no one can tell you who won Best Supporting Actress that year. No one can tell you what even won Best Picture that year. But Color Purple has gone on to have a longevity with Broadway and and plays and you know one of the jokes we also tell is that when I made Oprah's deal her agent uh, Jeff Jacobs at the time said Reuben can Oprah have her name on a poster I said no because she doesn't have she's, she's not a name so that's been also a, an ongoing joke that her name is not on the original, the original color purple poster so when uh, at the premiere of uh, the play <laughs> at the dinner down she says Reuben my name's above the title <laughs> on Broadway <laughs> I said, it's because I didn't make the deal. You know? <laughs> so no, it was uh, just everything about it. It was just wonderful and special. And, and, and I, when the 25th anniversary um, special edition came out, I had a chance to watch the movie again with, you know, with, with some perspective. And I can see why the whole is held up and, and how people say they've seen the movie 50 to 100 times because it's so classic, the, the story, you know, and, and even the inspiration behind the story, but the performances and, and the actors. I mean, there's, I mean, Morgan Freeman sometimes will say to me, well, Ruben, why didn't I get that part in The Color Purple? And, and uh, just, it was just one of my favorite experiences in casting. If, I, at, at, if, I, oh, if that was the end of my career, I would have been you know, satisfied, but thank God it, it only got better from there.